Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. Uh, I'm already a little bit more relaxed. The season's finished. There's going to be no more football for the Carlton Football Club in season 2021. But today I'm going to be doing the season review video while things are still relatively fresh and things haven't gone too far away from me and my memory still is here and basically I want to recap just everything that happened the year that was, start the healing process and and uh, talk, talk to you guys as well and, and, and understand a little bit about what we can do moving forward and, and what to look forward to. Um, well, <laughs> where does one begin? <laughs> so let's have a look. How did the season go? So we'll go game by game. How did it all play out? So obviously very excited. Round one came around. I still remember like, like it was yesterday when, you know, the excitement of like, getting the ticket, going to the footy, going to Richmond, going to that game and thinking, here we go, new hope, got the boys, got Adam Saad, got Zach Williams, we're going to be fine, Cripps is back to his best, Walsh, Brownlow, Walsh, um, we went down by 25, it was a, we gave it a red hot crack, that's for sure, but ultimately it was more of the same, nothing had changed, um, but I wasn't so angry at that performance because we, we did show something, round two was the big one, it was Collingwood and, oh, I mean, I mean, honestly, the way they showed up, the lack of, the lack of care for what it meant, that was, oh, that really pissed me off that game, really pissed me off and still bothers me. Um, we were 0-2 and we're thinking, oh gosh, here we are again. We had Frio and the Gold Coast coming up, two teams that were sort of with us last year, you know, thereabouts. Uh, we beat Frio convincingly. It was the largest winning margin for the year. Um, Harry kicked seven. It was a good day at the footy, um, but it was just a necessary win. The Gold Coast was very much of the same. Um, we didn't kick straight. We could have we could have actually won that game by a lot more, um, but they tackled very, very um, uh, fiercely, the Gold Coast Suns, that game. I, I remember that. Um, so we were two and two and we're thinking, all right, well, we had a bit of a slip up. We're still reeling from the Collingwood loss, but uh, we're two and two. Then we come up against Port. Uh, I remember that. That was the, the day before my birthday. I remember going to the President's Club function that night. Nowhere near it. Absolutely nowhere near it. Um, then the rhetoric started talk, you know, morphing into, okay, a little bit of a sample size of the season. Oh, okay, but these teams were top four last year. We had the Lions next week. I remember I was at my uh, my mate Andrew's wedding. I was a groomsman. I was like watching the, the, the game at every chance I could. Um, that second quarter really let us down, and we ended up losing by, you know, 22 points. And I remember at that time, filthy. We're two and four, and then there were people talking about stick the course. It's going okay. Oh, we're only we're only losing to these top teams by four goals. Like we're in it. Like. <laughs> serious that was frustrating i remember at that time um ultimately we're two and four and we needed to move uh we had the bombers the week after and i remember being nervous about that game because of what we showed against collingwood in round two and i was like if they don't show some spirit in this game then you know there's going to be anarchy um and and that ended up being the best day of the year that was so good that was actually so so good it's probably to be honest with you it's the only game i'll maybe with the frio game it's the only game I feel like worth watching again. Really mean that. That was a really special day, and I was really proud of them that day. The week after was the Doggies game. Did I kill you there? Learn from the loss. Failure is a wise teacher. We had them. We had them. We had them exactly where we wanted them, and and it. I remember it didn't dawn on me that we were going to lose the game until the Doggies went two goals in front. I still thought we had won the game and I think the players did as well. That was a very bad loss. And I know that we're ahead for a lot and people will talk about the Gold Coast loss, the North loss and Collingwood loss in round two as the, the worst ones. And oh, I think this Doggies one is up there because of how much of a control of the game we had or maybe we, we thought we had control and we never did. Um, Melbourne the week after, that was very similar to Port earlier in the season, never really looked likely um, I remember that was the game where Liam Stocker kicked his first goal and nobody got around him, or two or three players got around him, just pissed me off. The week after, we, we, we beat the Hawks 
it wasn't convincing, but we got the job done. That was a good day at the footy as well. I remember Harry kicking that goal. Um, that was a good day. Uh, the week after, Sydney, that was a poor loss. I think we had them on the ropes as well. Let that one slip. And then the week after was the Eagles. Oh my God, the Eagles, the waffle team. They had none of their players in. And and that, that was a very, very poor loss as well. That was at the SCG. Um, that was disappointing, that game. Very disappointing. Um, and we had the bye the week after and we're thinking, all right, well, we're going to have to regroup. We're going to have to do something here. Um, you know, then came... <laughs> oh my God, then came... Then came Saturday the 19th of June and the interstate trip to the Giants Stadium to watch the Blues lose by, what was it, 36 points to the Giants. Oh, the boys just didn't give a fuck that night. They did not care that night. It was a bit too hard for them, a bit too hard. I think 12 players didn't lay a tackle or something like that. It was crazy. I That was my breaking point. I think everyone's got one. Um, that was my breaking point. I lashed out at them. I screamed at them as they're walking off the field. I'm like, it's not good enough. I'll never forget it. They, they, they actually broke, actually broke my heart that night. You won't be needing this. They really did. They broke my heart that night. Um, I always loved them, but the way I felt that night, I've never been more devastated in my life. And I don't know why, it was just a regular season game, but just the lack of lack of care. And it was all a little bit too hard for him in the cold. And anyway, we're reeling. And then I think at this point, most of us have given up on finals. Um, we beat the Crows just the week after. The Crows started pretty hot, but missed quite a few shots early. And then, you know, we sort of took our chances and, and got that win. Um, then we come up against Frio again. Uh, that was a good. That was a good win because it was a grind. Frio gave us a good game, and then we, we pulled away in the fourth. And Walsh kicks that goal, obviously, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the pulse is back. Twelve and ten is on. Um, then we come up against Geelong. We, I mean, I, I still don't understand the rhetoric around this. People saying if we kick straight, we would have won. Well, we had one less scoring shot than the Cats. We kick five goals, fourteen, and people are saying, well, if we just kick straight in the first quarter, well. Of course, <laughs> if we kick straight in all of these games, we win a lot more of them. But we weren't good enough. Got done by the Cats. Um, then there came Collingwood the week after, and that was when obviously Sergio had passed, or Sergio Silvani had passed away. And oh, I was worried that they weren't going to show up, and they didn't show up for the first quarter. And I was cursing them and pissed off at them, and that was disappointing because that was the start of lockdown. So the Geelong game was the last game that we went to and, and that Collingwood game, we didn't get to go. They announced it like on the Wednesday or the Thursday that we wouldn't be going to that game. So that was disappointing, but that was a really good win and that was one that the, the fan base needed. They needed to see something from the heart from the boys and I think they showed it that night. Ah, oh, then came North Melbourne. Oh my God. There comes a point in life when you're just like, you know what, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? And we're going to have to deal with this for another two years. There's nothing we can do about it. There's, um, mate, I don't know if I'm... That third quarter, what were they doing? What were they doing? I'll, 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 never, I'll never forgive them for that game. Entitled, spoilt, brats, didn't want to work hard, didn't want to work hard, hard enough for long enough. That was very disappointing. Um, then all of a sudden, this 31-point win against St Kilda. Like, where? Where, where from? You know? To be fair, they copped an absolute <laughs> lashing in the media that week, so they responded there. Then came the bad loss to the Suns, just outworked. 123 uncontested marks to the Gold Coast Suns, I'll never forget. Then there was Port Adelaide, 95-point loss in Mark Murphy's final game. And then there was the 14-point uh, the loss to the Giants to end the season, and, and there it is right there. There it was right there. But I think... Going into the season, a uh, lot of optimism, a lot of hope, as there always is with the Carlton team. We, uh, we have, we've been starved of success for a while. We were hoping that this was the year that we would break the you know the finals drought. It's been quite a while now, since 2013, or if you want to count when we made it on our own merit, 2011. Um, you know, we've obviously started this rebuild and you know brought in you know, the likes of Jacob Wiedering and and. Harry and, and the like and moved on from there and you know they they were moving into their you know fifth six years and 
once we had Adam Saad and, and Zach Williams in the offseason, I think we all thought, wow, these are bona fide players that will be in our best 22, and uh, we should we should rock it up. Well, maybe not rock it up, but be there or thereabouts. I was hoping, I really was hoping for 12 wins this year. That was my, my aim and my goal. I'll have to ask my accountant about that. <laughs> uh, I was personally, I was going to settle for 10 or 11 wins and we ended up winning eight games and 14 and, and losing 14. Uh, we finished 13th. We played obviously coming off 2020 where we won seven games from 17 matches. So we've won one more game from five more matches in in, the, in a 12 month span. And um, obviously the overall feeling is no surprise. It's, it's disappointment. Um, I think everybody involved would be disappointed with where we're at. And I think one of the worst things to do is, is when you feel like you've wasted your potential. And I think that's what this year has been. So that's a high level of where we're at. This is the ladder as it ends for season 2021. You know, um, I don't wanna to talk too much about the other teams, but this is really about Carlton, but yeah, we, we haven't really moved much from, from the year before. Um, some key stats, rankings, I've gone onto footywire.com and, and got these, and these are really interesting. I mean, we ranked dead last for disposals per game, which probably went to show that the midfield depth that we thought we had, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, 16th in the league in tackles. This is a team that we were told was a, going to be a high pressure team, and wanted to score off turnover. And in reality, I think we probably showcased that more so last year than this year. I think our pressure dipped completely this year compared to 2020. Um, so there's that. We finished 16th in the league in clearances per game, even though we have the best clearance player. Well, I believe Cripps is the best inside midfielder in the game. He just didn't play like it um, for long enough this year. Um, so those are the, the key stats that, that stood out to me. but. More so about let let's look about let's look at what worked, what what did work. Um, I think more players emerged this year. We it's no longer the Crips, the Crips is Carlton show. So from that point of view, I I think that did work. We got improvement from from key players. Um, we you know obviously we have the the spine at the time of filming this. Walsh, Weedering, and Mackay have made the All Australian squad. So you know we we no longer have that reliance on Crips to be, you know, you know, if he doesn't play well, we lose. Well, we don't have that anymore. So I think that that is important. That definitely works. So we got a little bit more depth with our with our spread and, and really these are, you know, three young leaders now. So that that's that definitely worked. Um, look, we were able to stay in most games. We didn't get blown out until very late in the year. Um, I don't really like talking about that, but it is definitely something that did work. Um, you look at a team like the Saints, for example, you know, I had a chat with Jake from Saints TV before we played them and, you know, they had suffered some really, really bad losses, you know, 80 plus points. So we didn't have too many of them. We were in games. I, I don't know if that's something that did work. Um, and um, we secured funding for the redevelopment. Hey! Um, so, yeah. That worked. I really am struggling to think of anything else that did work this year, apart from a few individuals improving. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it. What didn't work? Well, <laughs> what didn't work? Everything didn't work. Everything didn't work. No, um, I think our leadership failed this year. I think um, our leaders, not just captains, but I think senior players altogether, I think we failed to, to stand up when the heat came on us. Um, and that I think is just part of the development of these players and leaders. They don't know any better. And it's a uh, look, all of these these trials and tribulations are hopefully going to be good for these players in the long run. Um, I personally don't think the co-captaincy works. Um, but yeah, the, the the leadership really struggled for me. 
not just on the field, off the field as well. I mean, coaching, I think David Teague struggled a bit in, you know, with press conferences and, and getting a message across. I think we didn't have synergy within the group. I think we had factions within the group. I think the defense, well, how about this, for what worked? The defense, I think the defense worked. <laughs> the ball was in there a lot, but yeah, the, the midfield pressure didn't work. Um, the recruitment of Zach Williams as a midfielder didn't work. The handling of expectations didn't work. Um, the inability to beat teams above us, that definitely didn't work. Um, you know, the coaching, I said before, but the five goal swings, just a lack of a lack of synergy, I think at time, I think we got better as the season went on, but there was a point in the year where the, the team cohesion was not there. Um, little things like getting around Stocker when he kicked his first goal, they didn't do it, like just little things like that. Um, the entitlement, the complacency, um, and you talk about off-field, I mean, the, the communication from club to member just didn't work for me this year. The injury report debacle every week. How many times did we talk about injury report coming out two, three days later, someone else being on like injured and out for the game? Um, the Carlton Way document that the club brought out made it very clear that we are proactive in our communication and, and that, that really didn't work. Um, I'm obviously leaving quite a few things out because I want you to add in the comments below. Um, so, so what do we take away from the year? What did I learn about this this year? Um, the Messiah complex is gone, no more. It's finished. There's no more thinking, oh yeah, we'll go get Zach Williams and, and you know that'll, that'll be okay. Um, the Crips comp Messiah complex, that's gone. So I think we can now move away from, from that. Um, I really do believe we need to look within, then look external for solutions. I think we are a, a club that is brand new to this new system in, in the way that we've drafted uh, and gone about our strategy for developing our club and our group. What I mean by that is we've never really gone to the draft as heavily as what we did in 2015 onwards. I mean, obviously we did in 2005, six, seven, um, but we, uh, I think we really need to invest in the club, invest in the people, uh, I think everything, most of the things that we need in terms of players, I think they're all there. Um, but we really do need to look within rather than just look for a scapegoat and throw a contract at like an Adam Chera or, or, or the like. Um, I learned that these long-term contracts, they're going to hurt us. These long-term commitments are going to hurt us. And I hope we don't lose a, you know, a Jack Silvani type or a you know, a camp down the track or some of these guys that in, you know, two, three, four years will command quite a bit. And I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm worried, definitely worried about it. Um, I learned that we have a really great, a great young nucleus in this, in this team that we can build around. Um, obviously the three all Australian squad members, Harry, Mackay, Jacob Wiedering and Sam Walsh. Then when you sprinkle in Liam Stocker, um, and some of these 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 guys, I think Paddy Dow started started to emerge a little bit as well. Enough for me to say, yeah, there's something in him, something there within him. Uh, I think there's a lot to be excited about with them. Um, and then ultimately, I I really do believe the club has failed its key stakeholders, being the members and the supporters and us um, on the field, completely failed, an abysmal failure. And um, that's what I took away. And I, I really did learn that um, I'm not seeing anywhere near enough accountability or a hand up or a, we got this wrong. I'm not seeing enough clarity. I'm not seeing enough authenticity in, in messaging. Um, it does not align with where the world is right now, not just because it's 2021, but also because we've had two COVID affected years and therefore there's been less uh, touch points with with people within the club to for, for supporters to network and go to events and go to VFL or AFLW. So to get the message across, you've got to utilize the technology that's available to you. And I think we are too conservative. We've fallen behind again. Um, and I think we need to embrace 
and actually want to be innovative moving forward to create a better connection with our people. So those are my takeaways for the year. Let's have a look at the shining lights. I think Jack Silvani, Harry Mackay, Walsh and Weedering, Stocker and Charlie, those are some of the shining lights for me. I love the fact that, I mean, it's it's a relief. We, we got a month of football into Charlie Kerno unscathed. It's, it's, it's a big win. It is, it was a big win and I want to give kudos to Charlie for the work he put in and, and Andrew Russell as well, who must have, you know, been working very, very hard to get a program together to get him back. So full credit there. Um, Liam Stocker as well, obviously, well documented, he had to um, come home in 2020 and, and deal with some, some personal issues. Uh, and it was just, I guess at the start of the year, that it was just a bit of an unknown, like, is he okay? How's he coping? Is he gonna play? Is he gonna, is he gonna contribute? Is he gonna make it? Um, I think we can definitely say that Liam Stock is going to make it. Um, Jack Silvani's growth, I think, is great as well. And um, it, 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 like I said, the, the young nucleus of players that we have moving forward are there. There's obviously a few more. I'm going to let you finish off that in the comments. The best win. Oh, it's Essendon. Has to be Essendon, right? It has to be the Essendon game. That was the best win for me. Uh, the worst loss. Look. I know that as the season went on, that they got worse. Like the North loss was bad, the Gold Coast loss. I know, but for me, nothing has made me like. It still bothers me, man. Collingwood round two, it still bothers me. In my mind, I really felt like we really had a, we really had a shot, you know. And um, that like, fuck, man. Yeah, fuck, I know. That still, it still you know, fucking bothers me. Which um, most improved. I thought was Harry Mackay. I remember saying at the start of the year that uh, if he can kick, you know, anywhere between 30 and 40 goals this year, that'd be great. Um, I didn't think he'd kick, you know, 40 plus, certainly not 50 plus and close to 60, but yeah, most improved is Harry. And then Walsh went another level as well. Like I, I think, I remember saying at the start of the year, I really felt like he was gonna have a Chris Judd type year, uh, third year that is, and Judd, Ended up winning the Brownlow in his third year. Is Walsh going to win the Brownlow? Who knows? We'll see. Um, but I definitely love the way that Walsh finished last year, which show, I usually look at that to see how they're going to go the next year. So love that. And then I think Jack Silvani was another one there that, that was um, most improved. The best moments of the year for me. Um, Jack Silvani, I think the Collingwood goal, the goal where he kicked when uh, obviously, you know, Sergio had passed away that week and he kicked that goal and that was a really special moment. Um, the fight with Essendon, oof, love that, love that. I think Matt Owey started that. Um, the Sam Walsh goal against Fremantle, uh, with the celebration, the fuck yeah celebration. Um, and then the, the Liam Stocker bump on Brody Majacek against Collingwood the second time we played them, that was great. The worst moment of the year. What was the worst moment of the year? Collingwood halftime for me. I'll never forget sitting in my in my seat at halftime, slumped like this, thinking, "What have they done? How dare they show up like that against Collingwood?" Um, that was just like I said before. That that still bothers me. That that irks me. That, that gives me the ick. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's called the ick. Like to this day, it's just ugh. ugh. Um, and then post game against North Melbourne, that loss was just, just so poor, so disappointing. And um, I'll let you finish off there. So share with me some of your your feelings about what I've just said. Like you know. Best win, worst win, best moment, worst moment. Talk about some of the, the most improved players that you saw and, and just add to what I've said. I didn't want to f do a complete review. I love I loved doing videos where you compliment what I'm saying. So um, definitely, definitely let me know what you think about that. And uh, we'll go from there. The next video will be the season player ratings video. I'm going to get the... Uh, the compilation together of all the play ratings that we did together and um, finalize the, the standings and then we'll have them set in stone and we'll see how they marry up to the club best and fairest and see how far away or how close we were to the actual results. So um, I look forward to that. I look forward to off-season content. Um, I know I'm going to be missing the games, you know, within a matter of days or weeks, um, but stay tuned because there's plenty in store. 
Go the Mighty Blues.